Hey everyone, today is April 10th, 2021, and tonight we will be reading Deuteronomy chapters 23 and 24, Luke 19, 28 through 46, Psalm 92, and Proverbs 13, 24 and 25. So let's jump in, Deuteronomy 23 and 24. No one whose testicles are crushed or whose male organ is cut off shall enter the assembly of the Lord. No one born of a forbidden union may enter the assembly of the Lord. Even to the tenth generation, none of his descendants may enter the assembly of the Lord. No Ammonite or Moabite may enter the assembly of the Lord. Even to the tenth generation, none of them may enter the assembly of the Lord forever, because they did not meet with you. They did not meet you with bread and with water on the way when you came out of Egypt, and because they hired you, they hired against you Balaam the son of Beor from Pethor of Mesopotamia to curse you. But the Lord your God would not listen to Balaam. Instead, the Lord your God turned the curse into a blessing for you, because the Lord your God loved you. You shall not seek their peace or their prosperity all your days forever. You shall, you shall not abhor an Edomite, for he is your brother. You shall not abhor an Egyptian, because you were a sojourner in his land. Children born to them in the third generation may enter the assembly of the Lord. When you are encamped against your enemies, then you shall keep yourself from every evil thing. If any man among you becomes unclean because of a nocturnal emission, then he shall go outside the camp. He shall not come inside the camp, but when evening comes, he shall bathe himself in water, and as the sun sets, he may come inside the camp. You shall have a place outside the camp, and you shall go out to it. And you shall have a towel, you shall have a trowel with your tools, and when you sit down outside, you shall dig a hole with it, and turn back and cover up your excrement. Because the Lord your God walks in the midst of your encamp your camp, to deliver you and to give you up your and to give up your enemies before you, therefore you your camp must be holy, so that he may not see anything indecent among you, and turn away from you. You shall not give up to his master a slave who has escaped from his master to you. He shall dwell with you in your midst, in the place that he shall choose within one of your towns, wherever it suits him. You shall not wrong him. None of the daughters of Israel shall be a cult prostitute, and none of the sons of Israel shall be a cult prostitute. You shall not bring the fee of a prostitute or the wages of a dog into the house of the Lord your God in payment for any vow, both, for both of these are an abomination to the Lord your God. You shall not charge interest on loans to your brother, interest on money, interest on food, interest on anything that is lent for interest. You may charge a foreigner interest, but you may not charge your brother interest, that the Lord your God may bless you in all that you undertake in the land that you are entering and to take possession of it. If you make a vow to the Lord your God, you shall not delay fulfilling it, for the Lord your God will surely require it of you, and you will be guilty of sin. But if you refrain from vowing, you will not be guilty of sin. You shall be careful to do what has passed your lips, for you have voluntarily vowed to the Lord your God what you have promised with your mouth. If you go into your neighbor's vineyard, you may eat your fill of grapes, as many as you wish, but you shall not put any in your bag. If you go into your neighbor's standing grain, you may pluck the ears with your hand, but you shall not put a sickle to your neighbor's standing grain. When a man takes a wife and marries her, if then she finds no favor in his eyes because he has found some indecency in her, and he writes her a certificate of divorce and puts it in her hand and sends her out of his house, and she departs out of his house, and if she goes and becomes another man's wife, and the latter man hates her and writes her a certificate of divorce and puts it in her hands and sends it out and sends her out of his house. Or if the latter man dies, who took her to be his wife, then her former husband who sent her away may not take her again to be his wife after she has been defiled, for that is an abomination to the Lord. And you shall not bring sin upon you, the land that, your, that the Lord your God is giving you for an inheritance. When a man is newly married, he shall not go out with the army, or be liable for any other public duty. He shall be free at his home. He shall be free at home one year to be happy with his wife, whom he has taken. No one shall take a mill or an upper millstone in pledge, for that would be taking a life in pledge. If a man is found stealing one of his brothers, 
of the people of Israel. Stealing one. Okay. And if he treats him as a slave or sells him, then that thief shall die. So you shall purge the evil from your midst. Take care in a case of leprous disease to be very careful to do according to all that the Levitical priests shall direct you. As I commanded them, so you shall be careful to do. Remember what the Lord your God did to Miriam on the way as you came out of Egypt. When you make your neighbor a loan of any sort, you shall not go into his house to collect his pledge. You shall stand outside, and the man to whom you made the loan shall bring the pledge out to you. And if he is a poor man, you shall not sleep in his pledge. You shall restore to him the pledge as the sun sets, that he may sleep in his cloak and bless you. And it shall be righteousness before, for, before you, before the Lord your God. You shall not oppress a hired worker who is poor or, and needy, whether he is one of your brothers or one of the sojourners who are in your land within your towns. You shall give him his wages on the same day before the sun sets, for he is poor and counts on it, lest he cry against you to the Lord, and you be guilty of sin. Fathers shall not put to death bec- fathers shall not be put to death because of their children, nor shall children be put to death because of their fathers. Each one shall be put to death for his own sin. You shall not pervert the justice due to the sojourner or to the fatherless, or take a widow's garment in pledge, but you shall remember that you were a slave in Egypt, and the Lord your God redeemed you from there. Therefore I command you to do this. When you reap your harvest in your field and forget a sheaf in the field, you shall not go back and get it. You shall not go back to get it. It shall be for the sojourner, the fatherless, and the widow, that the Lord your God may bless you in all the work of your hands. When you beat your olive trees, you shall not go over them again. It shall be for the sojourner, the fatherless, and the widow. When you gather the grapes of your vineyard, you shall not strip it afterwards. Afterward, it shall be for the sojourner, the fatherless, and the widow. You shall remember that you were a slave in the land of Egypt. Therefore, I command you to do this. Luke 19, 28 through 46. And when he had said these things, he went on ahead, going up to Jerusalem. When he drew near to Bethpage in Bethany, at the mount that is called Olivet, he sent two dis- he sent two of the disciples, saying, Go into the village in front of you, where, where on entering you will find a colt tied, on which no one has ever sat. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you, Why are you untying it? You shall say this, The Lord has need of it. So those who were sent away... And found it just as he told. So those who were sent away, oh, so those who were sent went away and found it just as he had told them. And as they were untying the colt, its owner said to them, Why are you untying the colt? And they said, The Lord has need of it. And they brought it to Jesus, and throwing their cloaks on the colt, they sat Jesus on it. And as he rode along, they spread their cloaks on the road. And as, and, uh, as he was drawing near, Already on the way down the Mount of Olivet. Uh, let's go back, sorry. <laughs> As he was drawing near, already on the way down the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of his disciples began to rejoice and praise God with a loud voice for all the mighty works that he had, they had seen, saying, Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. And some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to him, Teacher, rebuke your disciples. He answered, I tell you, if these were silent, the very stones would cry out. And when he drew near and, and saw the city, he wept over it, saying, Would that you, even you, had known on this day the things that make for peace. But now they are hidden from your eyes, for the days will come upon you when your enemies will set up a barricade around you and surround you and hem you in every side and tear you down to the ground, you and your children with you within you and they will not leave one stone upon the another in you because you did not know the time of your visitation and he entered the temple and began to drive out those who sold saying to them it is written my house shall be a house of prayer but you have made it a den of robbers psalm 92 a psalm a song for the sabbath it is good to give thanks to the lord to sing praises to your name, O Most High, to declare your steadfast love in the morning and your faithfulness by night, to the music of the lute and the harp, to the melody of the lyre, 
For you, O Lord, have made me glad by your work. At the works of your hands I sing for joy. How great are your works, O Lord! Your thoughts are very deep. The stupid man cannot know, the fool cannot understand this, that though the wicked sprout like grass and all evildoers flourish, they are doomed to destruction forever. But you, O Lord, are on high forever. For behold, your enemies, O Lord, for behold, your enemies shall perish. All the evildoers shall be scattered. But you have exalted my horn like that of the wild ox. You have poured over me fresh oil. My eyes have seen the downfall of my enemies. My ears have heard the doom of my evil assailants. The righteous flourish like the palm tree and grow like a cedar in Lebanon. They are planted in the house of the Lord. They flourish in the courts of our God. They still bear fruit in old age. They are even full of sap and green to declare that the Lord is upright. He is my rock, and there is no unrighteousness in him. Proverbs 13, 24 and 25. Whoever spares the rod hates his son, but, who, but he who loves him is diligent to discipline him. The righteous have enough to satisfy his appetite. The righteous has enough to satisfy his appetite, but the belly of the wicked suffers want. All right. Tomorrow's April 11th, and we will read Deuteronomy 25, 26, and 27. Luke 19, 47 through 20, 44. And Psalm 93, which is a short one. And Proverbs 14, 1 and 2. All right. Well, thanks for listening tonight, and I uh, hope you're reading along with me as we go through the scriptures. This has been really exciting, and um, certainly a blessing. It's hard to imagine a day when I wasn't reading the Bible every day, uh, but it has been a wonderful part of my routine, and uh, it's been a blessing to my entire family. So thanks for listening, and I'll see you here tomorrow.